Hello, it's Chaplin73 here. I'm here again doing another interview. Um, today I'm interviewing the artist John Mann. Um, and hello, John Mann. Hello. And I will um, just fire away with the first question and, and let John Mann do the talking. Um, so who are you? What do you do? And where are you based? So I'm uh, John Mann, uh, which is a, uh, a pseudonym. I'm uh, an urban artist. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, the pseudonym's a bit uh, sort of tongue in cheek. It's one that um, my sort of uh, um, best friend's little boy kind of uh, sort of bestowed upon me uh, a few uh, a few years ago, but it sort of seems to be the uh, the thing in urban art to uh, to work under a pseudonym. So I've sort of, uh, I chose that one, you know, it's just got that sort of little uh, person element, uh, you know, sort of uh, to it. Um, but yes, I'm, you know, I'm an urban artist, so work largely with uh, spray paint and stencils um, based in Dublin. Um, but yeah, sort of, I think more recent, I say I'm an urban artist, you know, I think more recently I've sort of drifted, you know, I guess to the sort of peripheries of urban art and just sort of started experimenting a bit more with, you know, with what I'm doing and my practice and my subject matters and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And where are you based? I'm um, sorry, I'm based in Dublin in Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, I'm uh, English originally, obviously, from as you probably uh, tell from the uh, the accent. But yeah, I've been in Ireland for uh, about six years. Um, I met uh, my wife a few years ago, who's Irish, and uh, moved over here. And uh, yeah, sort of happily, happily settled over here now. Brilliant, brilliant. So, which artists would you say influenced you or inspired you um, when you first started creating your art? Um, I think obviously working with spray paint and stencils, I'd be uh, lying if I didn't sort of say that uh, Banksy was a, uh, you know, a huge influence in, uh, um, you know, in, in what I do and, and where I am. Um, it was sort of, uh, I think, Banksy that sort of first inspired me to, uh, you know, grab some cardboard and, a <laughs> you know, a, a craft knife and some spray paint and just sort of see what happened, you know, so... Um, so yeah, Banksy was kind of a, a big influence in that. Um, and then um, Moss Shaw of uh, Arts Anonymous was a, uh, you know, a big sort of driving factor in uh, my journey as well. Um, you know, he, I don't, I don't think he's sort of painting so much these days, but uh, he was sort of painting at the time, had an art gallery with his uh, his wife, uh, or oh, sorry, his, his long-term partner, Kate Roberts. Um, and uh, yeah, I sort of, you know, I went to meet those guys and, you know, Moss was like, oh, show me some of your work. And he put some in the gallery and just, you know, just kind of really gave me that confidence, I suppose, in what I was doing, um, you know, had some sort of uh, some value to it. Um, you know, and kind of, I, you know, I think just that... Uh, um, that alone just really spurred me on to, uh, you know, sort of keep doing what I was doing. Um, um, and that was, yeah, you know, a good, good few years ago now. That would have been sort of, you know, probably eight, eight years ago. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it's, it's just really kind of, I guess, spurred me on and my, uh, my artistic journey. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, say what you like about Banksy, um, people love him or people hate him, but I think he has inspired a lot of people to be more creative, you know. And, and yeah, yeah, no, that's it. Yeah. Done, have a go, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Made it more accessible for people. Yeah. And I think that's the thing about spray paints. It's, it is quite accessible, isn't it? It's, you know. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's great fun as well. And I think, uh, you know, and as much as I kind of say I've been inspired by Banksy, I do sort of try and make sure that what I do is different to, to what he's doing. You know, I've always mm -hmm. sort of just tried, I suppose, to find my own little niche, um, you know, within the sort of uh, urban art world, you know, whether that kind of be painting on train tickets, which is perhaps what I'm best known for, you know, to sort of doing slightly more abstract things um, and I'm always kind of you know experimenting with what I'm doing and I guess sort of trying to settle into to what I'm doing. Um, yeah I saw, I saw a big piece of yours uh, on a wall um, which was train tickets which you, which you, you you know made look like it was on train tickets which I thought right, yeah 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 um, is that, that really piece like in, in Cheltenham yeah um, yeah 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 um, yeah so that's kind of yeah one thing I've been doing sort of for uh um, a number of years is sort of painting on, uh, you know, on train tickets with the sort of monochrome sort of, you can see an example behind yeah. me, which is the, yeah. the train spotting movie poster. Um, but yeah, now I'm sort of, 
broadening a little bit into sort of playing around on canvas with colour and sort of abstracts and splatters and doing a bit of gold, sort of doing a lot of um, sort of landscapes, country scenes with mm -hmm. sort of bales and using gold paint for the bales and uh, yeah, so having sort of, you know, a lot of fun and, uh, you know, and success with those as well, which is nice, you know, that sort of that proved popular. Um, so yeah, it's always, always nice when you kind of really enjoy doing something and people uh, yeah. Yeah. engage with it. Um, so yeah. I think that's what art should be about, isn't it? About you enjoying yourself. And if people are willing to pay you money for it, then, you know, that, that's a bonus, but you've got to, yeah, yeah, got to enjoy yeah. it really. Yeah, yeah. If it yeah. becomes a chore, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not ideal. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And sort of, you know, and I'm sort of, I think trying to uh, ditch, I guess, some of the, um, I guess, sort of, you know, preconceptions of what urban art is or what it should be, you know, just kind of, you know, and even what stencil art is and should be, you know, that kind of, I don't sort of strive to do millions of layers, you know, I kind of, I try and work with four shades and if I can't work within that, then I'll kind of, you know, try and rework it or reevaluate sort of what I'm doing, um, you know, because I just kind of feel that that's my style. I've got my colour palette and, you know, it sort of, it works and I can get a lot of detail, you know, in with just those four colours. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, I, I now don't limit myself to just stencils, which is something that I used to do. You know, I like to sort of now loosen it up with a bit of acrylic ink and, you know, yeah. if I can or need to use a, a pencil or a paintbrush in there as well and kind of, you know, make it a bit more mixed media than, uh, than I mm -hmm. will do. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, I, I, love, I love seeing artists experiment with new things and it's, it's, it's always great to sort of like expand on what, what, you're, what you're doing. Um, yeah. So so what advice would you give to artists starting out now or advice do you wish that you'd had when you started out? Um, I think probably the biggest one, you know, is that art doesn't have any rules. Um, mm. So, you know, and I think there's a, a quote by Banksy who kind of, you know, like graffiti has all these kind of, you know, sort of supposed rules and sort of do's and don'ts within the, the sort of you know within its subculture and I think sort of you know Banksy is sort of quoted as saying that you know I didn't become a graffiti artist for people to tell me what to do <laughs> um, you know and that's why you know he sort of broke the mold and started using stencils and and that kind of thing you know and I think um, yeah it's probably sort of taken me I guess a few years just to sort of I guess kind of you know realize that for myself that actually you know there are no rules and you know as an urban artist if I want to sit down and cut butterflies out of train tickets which is one thing I've started doing then you know I shouldn't kind of feel that I can't do that because I'm an urban artist you know and it's maybe not kind of hardcore or cool enough you know that kind of just you know I think do what you want to do enjoy doing what you do um you know and if people like it great if they don't then you know, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's anyway. the thing I love about urban art is is the fact that it is so it's such a broad um, spectrum of, of of things, and I'm always um, enthralled to see the new things that people come up with. You know, like, like I saw on one um, piece on a wall once, somebody would used moss. You know, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and and like Isaac Cordell using his, his concrete characters and placing them in urban settings and you've got people like Slinkachu using the little characters and, and sitting them on a train window or whatever you know you've got all these different ways of, of and like you say you know cutting butterflies out of train tickets who's to say you know you can't do that as an urban artist it's yeah 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 that's it yeah so yeah I think that's you know kind of uh, I think don't try and you know pigeonhole yourselves or kind of you know go with any rules just sort of do do what uh, you know do what you do um and i think always kind of you know just strive to be better um mm -hmm. and do try around with different things like i've sort of i think over my own journey i've kind of you know there's a few other artists and i won't name them but you know who i kind of follow who i do think have just kind of remained quite stagnant mm -hmm. um in you know in terms of what they do um and and I think you know, and I think that's sort of fine to a point. You know, you obviously get to a point where you kind of you've really honed your craft and sort of, um, you know, you're producing, you know, perhaps producing your your best work or you know, you're producing something really, 
really polished and uh, you know I think that's great but until you get to that stage I think you need to experiment and try new things and you know you can't just keep doing the the same thing I suppose and expecting mm -hmm. a, a different result um, and I feel that you know I'm still within that sort of that journey of playing around with new things and you know and sort of some are working some aren't and sort of marrying different bits together um, I think yeah. I think yeah it's a really valuable thing to do you know so don't just sort of I guess settle into to one thing just keep experimenting and you know keep trying to to better yourself Mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah, that's that's a thing that i you know i'm very aware of is is the collaboration not competition side of things you know it's, it's, it's utilizing what you're seeing but not competing with other artists and, and yeah, trying, yeah you know the only person you should be competing with is, is yourself of yesterday you know it's, it's yeah of, yeah trying to trying to make your stuff better and better and better in yeah way. yeah that's it yeah yeah and just uh yeah you know and sort of experimenting and, and doing different things you know which is uh and you know and i see that in sort of my own work in my sort of train ticket pieces that uh you know i sort of started off and i was just purely kind of using stencils and then i'd sort of bring in a little bit of acrylic ink just to kind of finish little bits off here and there and then sort of got more reliant on the acrylic ink and now i've started sort of bringing in a bit of paintbrush and that sort of thing you know just to sort of um yeah kind of achieve the sort of end result that I want I suppose really you know that uh, if I can't get the end result that I want with just a stencil then you know I'll kind of you know now bringing in other medium um yeah. you know media um and and not stressing about the fact that it's you know it's maybe not no you know maybe not sort of strictly urban art anymore and that it's not just spray paint and a stencil um, yeah yeah I'm with you I'm with you and um, so that leads us quite neatly into um, what's in store for the future. Have you got any future projects lined up you can share with us today? Or? Um, so another mural in Cheltenham um, on the cards, sort of hopefully that will, that was supposed to happen um, this year. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, as lots of things <laughs> didn't happen this year, let's not, uh, let's yeah. dwell on that. But uh, yeah, I think, um, Hopefully uh, that will uh, will still go ahead uh, next year. Um, and then what have I got? I've got Roy's Art Fair happening in May. Um, I've done two of those already. I'm going to do uh, another one. So yeah, just lots of um, sort of I guess works in uh, works in progress really uh, for that. Um, and then I've got uh, um, another couple of uh, sort of big train ticket. Uh, pieces when I say big I mean sort of large scale but actually on train tickets um, right. were sort of uh, in progress as well so yeah I think uh, come January I'll be uh, busy sort of working away uh, working away on those. Um, Do you use the train a lot? No, very little actually. <laughs> Where'd you get all your train tickets from then? Um, got lots of sources. I mean, I'm kind of uh, I'm lucky that uh, you know a lot of people now will sort of save them for me and you know sort of send them on. Um, I've had occasions where I've gone to the ticket barriers in the train stations and just kind of showed uh, the staff on the ticket barriers kind of some of my work and what I do and you know would they kind of kindly and you know the tickets get sucked away don't they into the yeah. barrier into your journey and just say can you can you empty the uh, the barrier out into my bag please and they've uh, you know kindly sort of done that for me oh, um, yeah you oddly you get um people selling train tickets on ebay mm -hmm. um, so i'm always kind of just looking out uh, on ebay for you know the sort of orange ones now i've got uh, bags and boxes and drawers full of them <laughs> um, but, uh, you know for the sort of the work that I do with um, cutting them into butterflies and collaging them and that sort of things always looking for sort of uh, different designs so uh, yeah, yeah you know sort of um, and yeah eBay is kind of a good a good source for, for those you know if I want some Japanese tickets or uh, you know tickets from foreign destinations that might be sort of colorful or different to uh, um, to incorporate into my work um, so yeah, get a yeah. Um, eBay is always a, a good spot. I love the idea of the recycling and, uh, and you know the, the the fact that you've taken these train tickets which would have been discarded and 
you know. To yeah, them. yeah, that's it. And uh, because they're not actually recyclable with the the strip inside them, they can't be recycled. So uh, they would uh, they would all end up in uh, in landfill. Um, oh wow! Yeah, and I think it sort of. Um, gives them a bit of you know a bit of interest um, yeah. and I think you know like the, certainly the the orange train ticket I think is an iconic piece of uh, British design um, and one that uh, you know will very shortly be uh, consigned to the history books you know I think as as tickets move digital um, mm -hmm. and rightly so you know that it's then something that uh, you know in a, in a few years or you know certainly in a, a generation or so will be uh, you know sort of something you know sort of preserving them and giving them a bit of interest um you know the work that i do it has that then that sort of dual aspect to it um in that because uh, i use transparent paints so yeah. you can still see sort of through the image to the details on the tickets mm -hmm. um, and so yeah you know you can sort of stand back and admire the artwork or you can get up close and just you know sort of ponder and wonder about each journey um you know, and sort of, uh, I guess, also sort of be taken aback at the price of some of the journeys. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it gives an additional depth to the to the actual piece, doesn't it? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that with the book pages, the things that I do, you know, the paste ups that I do. That yeah, yeah. Some people just look at the image, but some people actually try and work out what book it's from. You know, right? So, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, so, Which, yeah. You know, it does add something to the um, the, the the art piece. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with us today. Um, it's been really informative and it's been really great talking to you. Uh, I wish you all the best with your, your next piece in Cheltenham and your, your large piece on your train tickets. Um, thank look you. forward to seeing them on your social media. Um, yeah. it, and thank you very much for spending the time today and um, doing the interview with me. No, pleasure. Thank you. That's all for today, folks. Um, I, if you like what you've heard today, please press subscribe below and subscribe to my channel. Um, I will be interviewing a lot more artists over the forthcoming weeks and months. And um, that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening.